Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Right, guys. Uh, welcome to our discussion tonight. We're going to be talking about um, uh, some lighting and some photography, and we have a, uh, a talented group of people that we're going to look at the images and we're going to discuss it. Welcome, guys. Um, Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Toby. What's up, guys? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> so, uh, for our viewers, um, I want to really encourage you guys to ask questions. We will bring it up on screen. Um, if you want to say something or ask something, just bring it up. Just type it into the comment box, and we'll bring it up on screen, and we'll deal with it. Um, right, so we're going to kick this off. Um, I just want to first introduce everyone. Um, so, guys, uh, as I introduce you, please... Um, please uh, people know who you are um what you do what your genre of photography is and then we'll go from there we'll start with livingston <laughs> oh my name is livingston um can can you hear me guys <laughs> oh, good. Uh, i am from i'm from i'm from bushback ridge in um in manga i'm next to kruger kruger national park i met kruger as we speak <laughs> <laughs> um my genre my genre it's mostly uh beauty portraits um events weddings um yeah basically everything <laughs> everything that has to do with photography i do <laughs> i don't okay. have a specific genre to say yeah, i do everything photography Anything that makes money. Yeah, so basically, that's <laughs> anything that makes me money. You, anything that is photographic, call me. Uh, I'm there. <laughs> yeah, right. that's what I do. <laughs> but but I but I love fun. mostly uh, beauty. Beauty. Yeah. Great to have you here, my man. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Tyrone. Tyrone Noble. Whoa. How's that? Yeah. What do you want to hear from me, Jumpy? Tell us a little bit about yourself and your photography and what genre you're shooting. Um... So um, I'm originally from the deep south of Johannesburg, a place called Annadale. Um, you actually have to drive past the free state to get to Annadale. That's how far it is. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's where I grew up. That's my hometown. But now I stay in the south of Johannesburg, Winchester Hills. Um, that's where my studio and 
the office is based. Um, I shoot all kinds of genre also, but mainly fashion, automotive, wedding, um, but also, like you said, Trompi, anything that makes the money, brother. Especially when you work for yourself. Great, thanks. Nice to have you, Tyrone. Okay, thanks, Anwar Trumpy. Abrams. Hello, Trompi. Um, yes, um, I'm from Wellington in the Western Cape. Um, I shoot mostly wedding and portrait. Um, as well as I've got a home studio, I'm currently sitting in my studio at this point in time um, with one of my backdrops that I've got behind me. Brilliant. Thanks, Anwar. And then Silver, Silver Studio. Rudy and <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Um, hey, we've, hey. Been, we've uh, been shooting together for almost a year now, but I've been doing this for almost a decade. Um, we specialize in weddings, and, also portraits, uh, and commercial. commercial. Yeah. Brilliant. Nice to have you guys here. Lucky. And then someone that needs no introduction, Mr. Dion Kutsia. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm uh, from just outside Alberton on the East Rand. And uh, yeah, I do weddings. I do studio and portraiture and also commercial photography. Like everybody said, we need to pay the rent and keep the lights on. So we do what's necessary. <laughs> but in essence, I love to photograph people. If you put me in front of a beautiful landscape, I'll drag somebody into it. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Dion. Um, just for our viewers out there, I actually handpicked all these guys uh, because I've been following their work for a long time. I've known Dion for my whole photography career. And uh, obviously, your work is so good, uh, it impresses. So, welcome to everyone here. Um, so, I'm going to start off, Dion. Um, we're going to talk about equipment a little bit. And uh, I want to. Um, Ask Dion. I know Dion was one of the first guys in South Africa to create a studio light. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, that was long ago. Um, I shouldn't give uh, the year that all this happened, but this year I'm in the industry for 40 years. It's my 40th celebration wow. in the photo industry. Wow. So, wow. 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 40 years ago, I did my first professional wedding, but it, it didn't look professional yes. at all. I was just paid for it. Um, I got a little bit better through the years. But in, in 1996, there was a big gap in the market for uh, studio lighting. There was just a few suppliers and they were raking it in financially. So I opted to locally produce studio lighting much cheaper. So in 1996, we... Uh, designed and produced uh, our own studio lights and it went well for a couple of years and then we got out of that just in time because the chinese brands started to come into the country so so the guy that invested in this business was very wise he said Dion, let's shut this down now before we lose money the chinese people do it much cheaper and uh, and they can produce and they can land it yeah, cheaper than what we can manufacture it. So yeah, 1996 and about three years on, we did this, and and then I had to get out of it. And today I'm a uh, Godox user, big time. Uh, I did I know quite a bit about the insides of of lights, and I did a lot of research on studio lights, and I've got very good reasons why I use Godox, and uh, and and so yeah. Please share a few of those reasons, Dion. Um, when I started to research uh, studio lights, for instance, we've got a full, uh, um, we've got six uh, Godox GS400. So I was looking for somebody that something that's very reasonably priced, but that's got very good specs. And the Godox brand at that stage, this is about eight, nine years ago, um, at the price range, it produced the shortest flash duration available in the market. So there are flash durations that's similar and a little bit better in the market, but four or five times the price. So uh, Godox gives you a fantastic quality value combination. And I've been hammering those studio lights for eight, nine years now. They work very hard. I love my studio work. I'm in the studio as much as I can. We've been hammering it. And the only problem I've had was one flash tube that broke 
because the light fell over from a three meter height. Uh, the, the picture where this happened, I've got in the portfolio tonight, but this light fell over and it fell from three meters and it broke the flash tube. I replaced the tube and the light is still carrying on. I'm very happy. It's good quality, uh, a good price combination. You won't get better a combination like that in the market. Can I also add something to the lighting equipment? Something that I also like about Godox is the the battery the battery life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially with the eighty two hundred. Um, I must say I've done like two, three, four consecutive weddings and without charging them. So their battery life is absolutely amazing. And the fact that they are portable. <laughs> the small. Yeah. Like the small little thing <laughs> just in here. Fantastic. <laughs> I actually, uh, I actually did a, a, a an entire uh, lighting workshop with an eighty three hundred, and I mean, you know, Dion, you know uh, how uh, lighting students can hammer a light, and I tell you what, that yes, I went home and it was like three bars left. I'm like, no way, it can't be. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very true. The only other thing yeah. I wanted to ask you um, is uh, just quickly share with the guys how many weddings you've shot in your life. It's a lot, eh? It's close to 2,000 <laughs> weddings now that I've done. Um, so, yeah, I've seen it, I've done it. I can tell you hair raising stories about weddings. And uh, I love the weddings. It's beautiful. You become part of the family for one day, which means you see the good and the bad for one day. Um, and, yeah, I just love it. It's, it's fantastic. It gives you also the opportunity to... To turn whoever is getting married, whether they are beautiful or not, and I say this uh, 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 very carefully, it's your chance to mother them into celebrities for the day. And so, yeah, I just love the weddings. I love what's happening. And uh, I, I don't get tired of weddings. People always say, get out of the wedding business, get out. Of I love it. I love it. It's, it's just a lot of fun. Good. Dion, and then uh, lastly, in terms of equipment, what is your go-to um, setup for, let's say, for outside portraits? What is what is the lighting that you use for outside portraits? Uh, lighting, I've got an uh, AD360 that I've been using for a long time now. This thing just doesn't want to break. It, it's just, it carries on and on and on. And like, uh, uh, like Rudian Yolanda said, you know, you forget to charge the battery and then you're still okay for another wedding. And then you forget to charge the battery and then you're still okay for another wedding. Uh, so I, I love to use the AD360. I can use it as is in a standard reflector. When, for instance, if there's a lot of wind, I can shoot it. I shoot it through a, a, a brolly sometimes. I also have the Godox uh, P90H uh, 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 parabolic box. I love to use that as well. So whatever uh, we need. Then also I've got two AD 200s that I use. So I can do a one light, a two light, or a three light setup. And because it's all batteries and because it's so easy to move around, uh, you know, that's why what I use. And then, Dion, you said in, in studio you use the AD 400s. Uh, no, no. In studio, I've got uh, a, a GS 400s, which is a proper, you know, normal studio light. Um, uh, in future, when, well, I don't know, these GS 400s don't want to stop working, you know. It's like uh, some cars. You have to take a four-pound hammer and, and hit the engine and kill the engine to, to be able to buy a new car. This is how it is. So uh, I just use the GS 400s. It's not battery-operated. Uh, but I do have the three uh, uh, AD lights as well. If if you do a sort of a studio setup, but on location outside, uh, but I use six uh, GS 400s in studio or up to six GS 400s in studio, which is all Godox equipment. Okay, brilliant. Uh, we, we'll we're going to show you guys some of Dion's, Dion's images a little bit later. Let's move on to. Rudy, before he gets uh, frisky there, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the winter, okay? <laughs> guys, what is your lighting setup? I know, I know you guys shoot as a couple on the day, so who fights for what lighting? <laughs> this, uh, that's actually a very good question. <laughs> we, we don't actually fight. Uh, we work very well together. 
So, <laughs> he doesn't agree. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. Uh, sometimes we might have a little bit of a tiff, but uh, never in front of clients. Um, uh, when we start off, we'll, um, if it's a style shoot, we'll set up the lighting setup and discuss what type of look and feel we're going for. And then um, when we work with the models, we'll uh, pose them, but we'll take chances to yeah. get our shots. Yeah. Yeah. So what we usually do is, is sometimes if I have an idea, then I'll quickly grab my shots and then she'll say she has her idea. She has her ideas and then, then she'll grab her shots and then we will work like that and then around some, each other. Yeah. And then sometimes you'll take wides and I'll take close ups and all will switch. Yeah. 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 So we usually do like, like, yeah, like, like she said as well, like, What's the use if we both like shoot on an 85 prime lens? Um, I would I would rather shoot like on a 35 and then she would shoot on an 85 and then we can get a variety of different shots. And then sometimes we'll then just exchange exchange the lenses and then vice versa, go like that okay. from there. So, yeah. And it's obviously good for you guys on a wedding. I know Dion and his wife also shoot together. You can you guys can split up and one take the bride and one take the, the groom. Uh, where for, for me, I, I do it all, so I, I, I like it. What is your go to lighting uh, on, on the weddings? What is what is the gear that you use in terms of lighting? Uh, we've got two 8200s uh, and then um, two Godox V862s, <laughs> the speed lights. Yeah, the V860 speed, speed lights. You use yeah. the speed lights as well. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. Right. And then we combine them with different soft boxes mm -hmm. or umbrellas. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes if we shoot in Arch Light, then we will um, make use of the 8600 as well. Oh, you've got the 8600 as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah that's my go-to light. I just like having enough light for whatever I need to do. I'd rather, <laughs> uh, you know, turn down the power than struggle to get the light. Oh, no, no. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> There you go. Back in action. <laughs> Sorry, man. Um, and then what I wanted to ask is, um, just because I do that, um, I, I always have to work with a lighting assistant. Do you guys ever be an assistant for each other on the day? Um, like a second shooter or just a Well, assist? like a, 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 a voice activated light stand. <laughs> we actually have uh, a few students like that, that, work, that work for us. So. Yeah, we, do have a, we have a few students that assist us on the day. Yeah. Good, but good, if, good. It, if push comes to shove, then and the I'll budget jump is in Yeah, the budget is small, in. then we yeah. will then, yeah, then will be each they other's each other, yeah. talking life stand, you know? <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to share some of the images a little bit later. Let's move on to Enver. And well, yes, Trumpy. So, Andrew, yes, I can. Uh, what, what, uh, what is your lighting situation? What kit do you use? Um, and in which situations do you use them? Um, I started off with a studio um, on this side. With um, I've got three SK300s, which I use in studio. Um, but um, I utilize mainly my 8400 Pro as my key light. Um, the consistency of the light is so much better than the, the SK300 at this point in time. So um, this is the one right uh, behind me. So that's my go-to light for indoor as well as for outdoors um, for my portrait shoots um, out, outside. And then I've also um, utilized these two powerful ones, the same like Rudy and them. So um, they're very powerful for outside. So um, it, it makes it so much easier, especially if you get to a place where the wall is white um then uh, or the roof is white then um doesn't matter where in the building that you are shooting to you've got even consistent lightning all over um in in the place so those are my go-to's um for inside and this one at the back here uh, my 8400 pro that is my my main key on the same basis that you said earlier is that um yeah you don't know it might be normal circumstances when you leave the house, but uh, if you need some additional power, then you want it. Um, so I just prefer to to, to utilize the 8400. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I've got to say, guys, the for me the 8200s are so special because they're so 
affordable and you know you can easily um have three or four of them and have a three or four light setup you know um it's not like you're gonna have to spend another 15 grand and another 20 grand for another light you know the 800s are strong enough so you can actually <coughs> use them you know i think uh, that's where the power also lies i've also i've always got the 8600 and then four 8200s in the bag you know if you can't make light of that you're a bit stuck <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anwar. Uh, Tyrone. Yes. Tell us okay, about so, your lighting, my man. So um, I use a 8300 Pro, and I have uh, two V860s, the same as uh, Rudy and Yolanda, um, which has been my go-to flashes for off-camera flash for years now. Um, but the 8300 is definitely something that I'm still uh, getting used to and enjoying the amount of power that comes with it. So uh, I envy you guys with the 8600s and the 400s. I'll get there. But for now, I'm making work with uh, the 300 watts of power that I have at my usage. So that's quite cool, yeah. <laughs> like a giant. Yeah, so I normally uh, use two light setups. <laughs> well, not normally, it depends what I'm shooting, but sometimes it would be my 300, uh, 8300 and then the second setup would be with the V860 in the QR, the quick release uh, softbox. Okay, okay. Yeah. And that 8300 is a beast, uh, I've got to say. Yeah, it's beautiful. Especially the model lamp, I'm using it right now because we have load sharing. So the 8300 <laughs> lamp, model lamp is actually helping me right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> some light, yeah? so there you can see it's quite a good use also. <laughs> I don't look like a Dion and Trompy that's lit up very nicely there. But... <laughs> I'm, I must say, I'm lucky. Uh, I'm at the uh, photo factory venue here in Boxburg. I'm actually on the road and we're going to pick up people at the airport later. And, uh, and then my friend Sean said, I can just pop in and do it at this venue. So the beautiful lighting you see, yeah, it's not mine. It belongs to Sean. Our photo factory venue is grand. <laughs> you look like you're ready to do a photo shoot then, Dion. Yeah? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't hear you. I said you look like you're ready to do a photo shoot then. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Just let us uh, close the stream before you start stripping, Dion. Huh? <laughs> okay uh, before we move on to livingston uh we've just got a question here guys and please feel free to 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 chime in um how do you set lights on set especially a wedding without interrupting video so say you're working with a video crew what is uh, the lighting uh, what, what do you take into consideration in terms of lighting wedding guys sure um well, okay, now go first, uh, Yolanda. Uh, well, uh, Rudy and I, we do sometimes photography and videography together. And um, for instance, when you have a light set up for the reception, um, you can't really, you know, you'll, <laughs> you'll see the flashes go off on the video. You can't help yeah. it. You literally can't help it. But if we do a setup for the couple, then we'll take chances. Then I'll take mm. my shot and then video will come in and get their shot. Yeah. Lauren, you were saying? Yeah, I normally just work around the videographer if I got mm. a good understanding with him. But mm. if I don't have a good understanding with him, then I'll have to work around my flashes. <laughs> yeah, I can easily impose this <laughs> two seconds of a clip. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so. Sometimes uh, a videographer moves in, and some of them have got massive lights, and they all they they virtually kill the atmosphere. Because yeah. I love to mix yeah. ambient and flash, and, mm. and in such a way that flash don't overpower ambient, sort of more of a fill. Yeah. And then and then if you've got the wrong video people, bam, they pick up with these massive lights and they kill the mood. So. Uh, it's it's a will be a good idea for wedding photographers to hook up with specific video people and sort of as part of their own team and they will work well together and and then they can figure out how to do how to, how to do this you know you know like uh, um, you you get your chances and they get their chances to shoot but sometimes you have to work together like the first dance you have to work together 
and the first dance only happens once. Uh, so, yeah, you know, a good idea will be to work with very specific uh, video people. Good answers. Um, right, uh, Livingston, tell us about yes, your life. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for studio, I use uh, two AD six hundreds um, for for um, <laughs> for weddings, for weddings, especially uh, wedding receptions. I like using uh, off camera flash. I use my AD two hundreds. I have two of those, and then I also have um, an AD three hundred that I just bought recently. So yeah, basically that's what I use. I hardly use the AD AD six hundreds because I feel the power is just too much. So um, I use mostly my AD two hundreds because they are portable and they give me what I need. Okay, brilliant. Right, guys, if questions are coming in. Uh, Craig Anderson Photography is asking Tyrone, what diffuser are you using with your AD three hundred? Okay, Craig, so in the meantime, I'm using uh, the one that uh, fits on nicely with the 8300. I think it's the ADSW85 um, that fits on the 8300. Um, that's what I'm using in the meantime. I'm going to get me another bracket, then I can switch around with the diffusers. But yeah, in the meantime, I'm using the ADS85. Okay, brilliant. Uh, we've got a question from Jock. Um, he's asking, I use the 8200 with a TT600 and TT685. How can I get the white of my backdrop to stand out? That's one for the studio, guys. <laughs> oh, all right, um, I can take that one. Go for it, Dion. Can I go, Trumpy? Yes, please okay. go. Uh, uh, sorry, I was talking over somebody. Sorry about that. Um, when I look at the studio, you split it up in two areas. You've got your, your front area or the or the subject or the person in photograph and then the background. In, in, in all photography, I do this. But in studio, your, your, if your background is white, you need to overexpose the background to get that pure white. And, and so obviously you need to put lights on it. What I love to do is to put two lights onto it and overexpose it with just under one stop than what, what you've got on the front. And then something that works fantastic is if you if you can get two brollies, but reflective brollies, not shoot through, and you put two brollies up onto your back, white background, killing the light coming towards the front. So you've got two light setups. You've got the light setup on your background, two units overexposed by almost a stop, uh, but you've got the brollies that blocks that light off in a way because you change that background into a massive uh, 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 softbox actually in, in the process. And then the front, you like whatever you want in, in the front, but then have these two spaces separate. You can't just be one or two meters away, be at least three or four meters away from your white background if you can. John, that's a very good tip and I never thought about it um, because I... I sometimes go and shoot the headshots for uh, Monas, uh, the school. And then what I do is, you know, it, it's uh, I, I, I go with as little kid as, as I can. So I take a 8200 and I, what I do is, I've, you know, if there's a, a wall, um, even if it's not white, I just overexpose it heavily and just blow it clean. So it looks like a backdrop. I'm not going to take backdrops and stuff with me. I just want to work quick and easy. And I always have the problem with that light spilling back. And that thing where you do with the uh, the umbrella that actually blocks that light, that's brilliant. I'm going to definitely yeah. use that. Um, yeah, something that I've also done in studios, I, would too, I will use a V-flat. I don't know if you guys know V-flat, the V-flat boards. Mm. Um, and then I will let my light ricochet into the white V-flat board and then back onto the white backdrop. And it gives a very um, soft white... Um, to the backdrop so yeah i will usually do that as well and then there's no um like bouncing of the light oh, on the subject yeah. at all yeah Anwar, you were gonna add something <clears throat> yeah so what i wanted to add also is that uh, i've made myself my own bundles um just to just to uh, keep the, the the spread of the light also away from the subject so the reflectors that you get with the with the, with the lights is not sufficient 
And especially you must also have to figure out in terms of that your subject need to be away from the lights, a little bit in front of the lights. So you don't have mm -hmm. that bleeding, the spill of the lights uh, from the sides um, coming onto your subject also. So that will assist also so that especially if people's got white clothes on, um, on white and white, because I know there's not, there's not a lot of people that can do it correctly, that there's no spill of the light or bleeding um, where you can't see that the shoulders has been cut off also. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I think let's move on to some pictures because I think that's what everyone's waiting for. They want, want <laughs> to see the talent here. Um, I think, Livingston, let's start with you, my man. Um, I'll bring okay. up your stream in a second and then uh, let's walk through a few images. Can everyone see? Uh, yeah, so, Livingston, just bring up your images. There we go, and then make him nice and big so we can uh, criticize you. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> can You're you going to lock out if you do that. Yeah, I, I think just <laughs> up one by one, my man, and then we'll just run through them quickly. Okay. And then you can just hit the right can on you your it? keyboard. Yeah, it's perfect. Oh, that's a beautiful image. Tell us a little bit more about the lighting there, please. Um, okay, here I was using um, a one light setup. I was using my AD AD two hundred and uh, five in one that big reflector that I bought from from Godox. Um, so yeah, basically that's what I used. Just one light setup and a reflector just to create um, a nice light on the back. Yeah, basically that's it. That's brilliant. That's really, really nice. Yeah. Guys, if you've got any questions about the images, you must just uh, hop in. Uh, if there's something that you notice you want to know, just jump in. Um, yeah, okay. Give us one. Give us some more. Give us some more, Livingston. <laughs> oh, give me more. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Okay. Same here. Um, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> okay. Here, yeah, I Beautiful. was using my AD. I was yeah, I was using my AD AD hundred. Um, I bounced the light from the reflector. I put the reflector just below her belly, so the light bounced on the reflector just to create that nice light on her chin. Yeah, just one light setup here as well. And I see you shoot quite shallow, so you obviously use a high speed sync. I use high speed sync. Yes, I use high speed uh, sync. I've just got a question here from one of the guys, Munani. Um, he's asking, where did you place your reflector? Just tell him again. Uh, I didn't get that. Um, one of the guys are just asking, where did you place your reflector? Where did I this place image? the reflector? Yeah. You said you used where, the reflector in this image as well. Where, where did you put it? Oh, I had two people holding the reflector. So the reflector was just below her, her belly, just below her uh, the light bounces on the reflector and then it hits her face okay brilliant 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 yeah should i move to another one please yeah <laughs> okay i will take uh maybe one studio okay here i oh, was good. using i was using yeah, I was using, thank you so much. I was using my AD, AD600. Um, I used two of them on a white backdrop. Yeah. And the Basically. backdrop is an average pose. I quite like that, that gray that you've got going on there. Mm. It, actually, it's a white, it's a white backdrop. <laughs> I, I made sure my subjects move away from the backdrop. So the gray gray car. I think we're losing you there a bit, Mom. Um, can you hear me, Livingston? I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're back. You're back. Thank you. Uh, share us. I'm back. Okay. Okay. Should I? Could I show you more? Sure. Please. Please. Okay. Okay, I think here that is the first time I was using an um, AD three hundred. Um, it was a one set as well using my reflector. 
just to create that light that comes from uh, behind. Um, yeah, I was using high speed sync here as well. It looks like, uh, did you block off the light uh, for, on her before you put flash in there? Um, yeah, uh, it actually, it was, a, um, it, it was very sunny. Uh, so the sun was very harsh. <laughs> so I used, um, uh, it was a high speed sync. Um, I think I, I was at about, uh, it was full power. It was high speed sync yeah. at full power. Okay, I don't one know more. if there are questions on this one. No Can questions on this one. Perfect. We can hear you. Okay. It's perfect. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Let me, uh, this one as well. I was using my 8600s. Uh, I used one here with a reflector as well on a white backdrop. Beautiful. Uh, uh, Livingston, can I maybe ask you a question? Sure. I just wanted to ask with the um, with the glasses. How did you? Where did you put your softbox to not like get any reflection in your glasses? What did you do? Um, okay, my softbox was like on top, um, not facing her, but on top. So the reflector was right. just beneath her belly as well. Nice. Am, am I explaining it nicely? Do you yeah, understand? Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, the reflector was just here on top of her head, so the the, the light bounces on the reflector and it comes back to her face. Mm. <clears throat> so what I like is I'm also a, yes. I'm also a one light shooter. I, I love shooting with one light, and I've got to say, what you what yeah. create with one light is amazing, my man. Mm. Thank you so much. I love one light. I love one light. I hardly use yeah. I hardly use two lights. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just go to this one. Let's see, let's see one of your sunset shots. Oh, sunset. <laughs> okay, let me see. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see. Okay. I see there was one with a, um, a cup. Yeah, let's go. Oh, one. beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, thank I you. I love how consistent, yeah. consistent your light is. Yeah, I used one light here, so I was using my AD200, but here I did not use a diffuser. Yeah, I did not use a diffuser. I just used that that little bulb that comes with the AD200 and a reflector. Amazing. And it's amazing how, um, and I always tell uh, my students as well, you know, uh, when you use flash, just the, the colors just pop, you know. Yeah, um, it does, yeah. It does, yeah. Yeah. I love how the yellows are popping in <laughs> Thank there. you. Yeah, the yellows are yeah. beautiful. There's one <clears> with <throat> a lady and a guy. Yeah, that sunset one there. That uh, is. Wow. Hey. Uh, oh, cool. beautiful. Oh, here. here. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Here I used, um, I was using my AD300, just one light. Um, and unfortunately, unfortunately, I didn't have my reflector with me. So I just used one light uh on a um, qr90 uh softbox what camera are you using balance mm. um here i was using my sony a7 3 a7 r3 wow that's beautiful man thank you Yo, so now much I, now i start to realize why i'm not getting jobs you guys are taking all my work <laughs> 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 um i don't know i don't know Dred, should i keep on or am i done yes, give us one or two more and then uh, we'll move on okay um, I'm loving your work. let's carry on you know the comment Thank you all like the, uh, your camera takes nice pictures <laughs> your camera takes nice pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's not me taking nice pictures it's the camera i <laughs> also want that camera uh, <laughs> oh yeah, here I was using my my Nikon D eight hundred um, on um, with um, with a Godox AD two hundred one light setup with a with a reflector as well. Godox AD two hundred giving um, you that light, that's amazing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, Godox AD two hundred, just one light, yeah, just and, one. And, light. and that's a good thing for the guys watching as well. You know, we all think that we have to have these big lights mm. and we have to have the big soft boxes. No, out. no, you don't. <laughs> No, you don't. No, you don't. Come on. In, 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 in fact, here, 
Here I was using an umbrella, not even a softbox. <laughs> I was using a shoot through umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Can I ask okay. how far yes, is your light from the subject there? Like for that particular photo? I make sure I, I make sure my light is not far from the subject so that it creates that softness <coughs> because if it's far, it it, it won't bring me it don't, don't give me that soft that softness on the, yeah, on, yeah. the on the story on the skin tones so i make sure my light is next close closer 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 very close to the subject okay thanks man. <laughs> so Livingston, can yeah. i say um a lot of these shots of yours you use a reflector underneath the, the client's uh you know lower on the body so that reflects the light back i can see you use that's quite a lot. Yeah, for, for, for yeah, for most of my portraits, yes. So Lilani just asked that question. So Lilani, um, yeah, he uses the reflector just below the, uh, you know, at the lower body of the client uh, uh, of the model, yeah. and he just bounces that light back in. So that's beautiful. Bounces the light, yeah. I bounces the light. Okay, here I'm just gonna give you something different. Okay, here I was using my off-camera flash. I used my Godox V1 off camera just one light i just bounce the light on the ceiling amazing 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 yeah thank you um if there's any questions or anything for uh livingston guys please let us know um uh, livingston amazing images i'm really impressed uh, yes thank you so beautiful. much thank beautiful you so work, much livingston. thank you thank you Stunning. thank you so much Really um, so guys, guys. Before we move on to the next guys, uh, the next person, we're just gonna we've just got a question now. Let me just see where it is. Um, hey, the question that always comes up for the weddings: How do you hey. handle wedding receptions with dark and thatch roofs? I hate those. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. How uh, we all do? That's a South African <laughs> problem. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Who's playing us music? Oh, there we go. Right, uh, so <laughs> tell us, guys, come on, wedding photographers, tell us how you deal with fetch roofs. Um, okay, I'll go first. With me, it's definitely a problem. I, oh, if I would mention wedding venues, then they would cut me out from there. But yeah, there's one or two in Joburg that's not my favorite for that particular reason. Um, it's like they try and make it even harder for the wedding photographers to get the best images of the brides and the grooms in those rooms. But uh, basically, I just bump my ISO up a bit more as much as I can without um, getting any noise on the images um, and just playing a bit with my white balance. That's what I do. I'm not sure what mm. the other guys do. Um, yeah, we all hate the thatch roofs. <laughs> it's very, it's a it's, uh, if, if we get to a wedding venue and the lighting in the bridal room or reception area is very dark. Um, yeah, Sorry, but fine. we work around it. Um, I've got a, a cloud sphere that I put on top of my flash on my on camera flash that um, sp spills and makes the light a little bit more diffused. So it's more softer, which helps. Yeah. Mm. Because you well, don't have well, that white um, roof to I, bounce off the light off. What, what I do I... with a with the thatch roofs, um, there's two things I do. The one is just a direct flash, and and then I I expose for ambient first to get to bring in all the ambient, and then add flash, but at about a third stop below ambient, just so that flash is not my main my main light source, and that helps a lot for the run and gun stuff in the reception. When we get to speeches. Um, what I do is I put the AD360 or you can put an AD200 on the stand and uh, shoot it through a snoot or a grid and and take it off camera and point it at the person that's doing the speeches. And if you've got an assistant, it will help because somebody has got to stand at the stand and switch between the two. And it will be good if it's two people working together often so that you, you can communicate. So when I shoot the uh, person doing the speech, the the uh, assistant points the flash to the uh, 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 in that direction for me. And what I do then is I 
uh, still exposed for, for ambient, uh, and then I drop the ambient exposure about half a stop and then keep the flash at the same. So what happens is you've got a bit of a, a brighter area on the person doing the speech and a little bit darker around. And then you keep it keep it like that and you switch between the person doing the speeches and, and the couple uh, listening to the speeches. And you've got this, or even if you've got the stand fairly close to you, but still off camera, you can just turn it by hand. I just loosen my stand grip a little bit and just so that it's enough to hold the light and I just turn it so but yeah, uh, grass roofs or thatch roofs we hate them with a passion <laughs> I think we should start mentioning the venue Maybe so just they quickly just to end off uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, sorry, sorry you can, you can go and go uh, no, thank you. Uh, um, not from my side. Uh, I utilize uh, both my two ADs, um, and I uh, with uh, umbrellas, and I cross over from from both sides of the building. And on camera, I put my V860 also um, with a Gary Fong also, just to um, cross over that uh, the, the the shadow that it casts. So the Gary Fong just uh, casts out a bit of that shadow that you see at behind behind um, the subject also. So the umbrellas, what the umbrella do? Obviously, it uh, creates a bigger uh, 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 softening of the light also, so that helps for me. Mm. Good. Um, quick question, if I'm asked, do you guys ever <laughs> shoot on um, TTL ever, or do you always shoot on manual? We've just got that question from Steve Carsing. Oh, I, I, I shoot on uh, manual. Sorry guys, uh, Steve Carsing just asked the same question, who all use <laughs> TTL funny. and who do find it useful? Thanks for tuning in, Steve. Steve the legend. <laughs> I I use manual personally. I use manual. I hardly use TTL. I would say I would use TTL just with the reception, um, with the people dancing, um, with the speeches and everything. Then I use with on camera flash. I use TTL, but otherwise, if it's on set, um, I I like to shoot manual and then like be in. Um, in control with um, with my whole set um, and how much power I want from each light. So, yeah, with each, yeah, because you know, on set I usually never, uh, we usually shoot with like between two, three, four, five lights there. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I used to ETL quite a lot, uh, especially in reception, because what I do is I put my light in the middle of the dance floor and I bounce it, and then everything happening around me, I can just TTL. Uh, I've got to say mm -hmm. the TTL on the Godox is, is amazing. Um, sorry, guys, I think we just lost. Uh, oh, yeah, Tyrone's back. One second. Tyrone, are you back? Welcome back. <laughs> just turn up your sound a little bit, my man. Um, yeah. Sorry, guys, Tyrone is uh, load shedding. Um, so we'll, we'll get him back on his laptop. I'll, Tyrone, I'll just leave you to the last end. And hope the, the power comes back on. Please, Tompi. Is that good? Okay, perfect. We better, thank you. <sighs> That's better, thank I'm you, my man. Thank you, Mr. Austin. Welcome back. <laughs> right, let's move on to Anver. Can't wait to see your images, my man. <laughs> Let me see where is your screen. There we go. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Mm. Cool. Okay, Anwar. Uh, uh, this what was a wedding I did in March. Um, this shot was done about um, 11 o'clock in the evening. So this was a tour light setup um, with um, my key light, as I've said earlier, my key light is always my 8400 Pro. Um, and the backlight was backlit um, with the 8200. Um, and I only did this shot once and it was the settings, everything was perfect. And that was the result that I got just with a few tweaks, um, in post, um, cause I did use my wide angle lens just to bring the structure up, um, so that everything looks normal. Um, and can I ask you a question? Um, on this side, yeah. Uh, Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, certainly. As with the yes. previous shot, um, how do you, 
do you use a continuous light because obviously it's very dark how do you get your focus how do you get your camera to focus on your on your subject um do you use a continuous light and then let the strobe lights go off or what do you do if i'm ask? uh no 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 continuous lightning um okay. i utilize um the light of the 8400 pro um i just put that on and um with a mirrorless system the r6 that i utilize um, once um, it detects that there's a light pin utilized then uh, it opens up like a night view um, which helps the, the camera with regards to um, the focusing um, then it's easy to focus because okay. then the autofocus still work you don't i don't need to i don't need to use um, the one point focus because the, the eye detection still works that time of the night okay cool thanks man well, that's clever that's very really clever and you know what uh now that you've mentioned that uh anwar uh, that's a very good idea um for that modeling light i mean i never use my modeling lights on my go my uh, go doxes and that's a great way to use them mm. yeah because if you, if you if i look at that specific area there that was where the ceremony took place and i mean you couldn't even see your hand in front of you so um, i put both the modeling lamps on for the 8200 also for my assistant just to see where he's walking and at the same time, I can exactly see where my light is at the back also, whether it reflects back directly into the camera or not, and whether it's hidden behind the subject. So, um, and as I say, the, 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 the 400 is, is, is totally out of frame. Um, and, and the mirrorless just makes it so much easier also, because I know with, with DSLRs, you're going to struggle a bit with regards to the focusing. Um, this one um, is only lit with a um, reflective umbrella. Um, the the lady is uh, the bride is keeping the umbrella, and uh, he is holding just a V860, which I you just pop into the umbrella, which just gives you that reflective um, light back. <laughs> That's clever, man. Um, <laughs> very clever. Look, yeah, it's very clever. Eh? That's clever, bro. <laughs> the black and white, the black and white is good for me. Wow, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. But... Beautiful. then this one um this was a bit of a struggle for me when i started off um but i eventually i never gave up i think i did it the shot probably 10 times before i originally did get it right um so once again a two light setup um it was just a pity that um i couldn't um on the on the right hand side where the reflection of 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 the groom is i couldn't get a reflection of her also because um it was too small the, the size of the the window couldn't open up any further to get the reflection of her also so obviously i've popped the um the 8400 in the corner and another 8200 just to um, open up um, the building inside and uh, only when i got home i saw that this light leading out from the from the building leads directly into the corner here um, of this picture. Beautiful. And this was also, as, as, as you can see, this was also um, very dark at night also. Brilliant. Just on the other side now, flip side, I was standing inside the building um, and a couple on the other side, outside. Um, you can see from the beginning on the front side also of the of the wall that obviously um, how dark it is. Um, once again, I'm just hiding the 8400 um outside one of behind the doors also other way around now this time i'm standing outside and the couple is inside still two light setup um with the uh, 8400 so you need a bit of power from behind um, to get the shot and these are some of my favorites also that i do um this was the last shot before i went home um for for, for this couple beautiful always as a and all these shots are done with my 20 mil sigma 1.4 um and the 400 and the 200 and i with my 400 i never shoot the bare bulb it's always been double diffused with the parabolic okay this one um i wanted to reveal the building also with a couple um and uh Strangely enough, one of the few night shots that I don't do with the 400, this was only popped with um, the V860. Um, and it was bare bulb 
lowest power with uh, the carry phone on it. Um, just to give a little bit more light so that it looks like um, the couple was lit by the existing light that is there um, at the building. I just added the fog there in the morning, uh, sorry, on the water, because it was late at night also um, that the shot was taken. <laughs> Some more for the evening shots. Um, if it wasn't for, for the, the backlit, it wouldn't be possible, obviously, to see um, the water uh, droplets um, on either side of the couple there. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the, this was one that obviously was utilized the gel with, um, a red gel. Um, and this was only with, um, I, did, uh, I think I utilized my flash by this V860. I utilized with this one. Okay. So that was all the night portraits that I've got here. And well, I've got a question from uh, Jack and Jacqueline. Um, what is your opinion around shadows in your images? Um, shadows in the images. So uh, I think the question would be, uh, um, the question is more probably to do with, um, I know a lot of photographers, especially when they do my lighting workshops, they, they're afraid of shadows. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my thing is always, uh, when I look at lighting something, I'm looking at creating shadows. I want to determine what the shadow should look like. You know, um, uh, how do you feel about that? No, I, I prefer the dramatic look. So I don't mind to, to have the shadows in my pictures. Especially yeah. if I'm not, I'm not sure if you refer to the shadow on the on the ground or if it's referring to the shadows in the face. Um, it depends I'm on the mood, mood as well, eh? The mood that you're kind of striving for as well. If you want to go yeah, for I, more that's why I, say, I, prefer, I prefer dark. I shoot for, for shadows instead of highlights. So I prefer more dramatic, a more darker yeah. look because um, it's easy in post also to bring up shadows than highlights also. Anwar, before we move on, I, I can't let you go before we see some of your daylight uh, portraits because those are the ones that's also grabbed me before. So can you bring us up a few? Anwar, Anwar are you there? I think we lost him. We lost him. Anwar, Anwar? No, Anwar's not coming in. Okay, we'll get him back on a little bit later. Um, Tyrone, are you good now or do you prefer? Yeah, I'm good. I have to make a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Let me bring you on. <laughs> right, Anwar, you can, uh, Tyrone, you can just bring up your images. Okay, cool. Okay, so I just put a few mm -hmm. together to so show the different types of lighting that I do. Um, I do a lot of automotive photography. Um, so this was from one of the photo shoots that we did. Out at, mm, beautiful. At um, beautiful, man. Henley A. Um, this is a friend's uh, Lamborghini Huracan. Um, he was kind enough to let me use this. Um, for this particular shoot, I used two 8200s bare bulb. Um, I also love the 8200s. I think I'm still going to get me a pair of those. It's a must have. Um, yeah, it worked very nice here. Uh, let me try and get the image that we brought out. As you can see there, we have the personal light assistant. Uh, he, he also helps me a lot with my behind the scenes, which is important. Um, oh, is that the best light stand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a talking light stand. <laughs> <laughs> the images that we got from that day. Also, I love how the lighting came out. Um, it was just to give a different look to my car images that I normally do. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions on that particular car. Yeah, image. so that car, uh, that car shot, I've got a question, um, Tyrone. So, uh, no. you know, uh, I'm not familiar with car photography at all. Um, I always, uh, when I have a car in my wedding shots, I'm always struggling with, uh, with highlights and light bouncing everywhere. How do you, how yeah. do you do that? 
Um, so Trombi, to be honest with you, I am shoot like I learn as I go along. So with the lighting, I place it different places all the time during the shoot. Um, I'm not too clued up in a technical kind of way, but in a practical kind of way, I work with how the lighting falls on the subject or how I want it to fall. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, good. I, I also had the same question as Trumpy, um, yeah. but because that, that Lambo has a matte wrap, it does yeah. help. But yeah, um, I usually help. take a polarized filter and put it on my lens. It also helps. Oh, yes. Um, so I do use a CPL filter also, which I helped with the shoot quite a lot. Um, that did help with this particular car also. Um, so Ryan, I, you, must, I, you must not be uh, you must not be shy of sharing your information, my man. <laughs> <laughs> he's keeping his secrets. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, so I do use a CPL filter for this one. I used, um, I think it was my 35 1.4, but I shot at 2.8 um, with the CPL filter on that day. Um, so I did get quite a lot of detail out from that shot. Um, I'll show you another one which you want. This I actually did on Sunday. Um, this was in the heat of the day, which is around 12 o'clock. Um, but I managed to get some sky to pop out on the shot also. Over here, I just used one light setup, which was the 8300 with the softbox. Um, and this, for this particular shot, we added directly under the client behind me um, for this particular shot. But like I'm showing you guys the lighting, I would also appreciate some advice from your guys' side. That would be cool. Um, do you have any questions for the, the shot, guys? Cool shot. All man. good. All good. I can go to the next one. Yeah. Mm. Shape. Um, same, same shot of same location, same lighting setup. I just went in a bit closer. Um, I like this shot because it made her pop out a bit more. It brought the mm. hair texture out, the highlights in the hair. Um, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that shot. The, um, brought up and the I see you also shoot quite shallow, Taran. Yeah, um, I try and not get too much background in, especially because I do a lot of uh, clothing brands also. So the clients that I work with, they try and uh, keep the focus on the subject. Yeah. Let me see. I'll show you. This was quite awesome. Uh, we did a a proposal for a friend of ours, DJ Nate. Um, he proposed out at Glen Africa. Um, mm. This particular shot, I put the softbox behind her um, because I wanted to light up her body from behind because we had enough light coming in from the right hand side, from the elephant side. Uh, it came out quite cool. This was one of my dope shots that I actually enjoyed doing. It's our end. Yo, um, how's your experience with the parabolic softboxes? Um, I I like it. It's just sometimes you know you have to figure out what type of lighting you want from it, how far you have to place it from the subject. Um, also, like the shape of lighting that gives around you, um, it differs from the new softbox that I'm using now, but it is much softer. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes I struggle with the parabolic boxes because sometimes it's so heavy, then it will, mm. I don't know. Oh, you mean like holding it upwards or? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I haven't had good experience with the parabolic. Yeah, I've, I've got to tell you guys, I, uh, I've, I've, I've moved to the parabolic two years ago and I'm not looking back. The, the quality of light that comes through that thing is, is worth any, any of the effort that you have to go through. It's simply amazing. So this was one of the cool shots we got unposed with uh, the parabolic box. And I really enjoyed this one because the detail is crazy on here also. You can see. Yeah. yeah what, what, camera, yeah. what camera did you use? Uh, 6D Mark I. Mm. Crazy. So huh? I'll just show you another <laughs> shot from the that we really... All right, we've just got a quick question from one of the guys. Um, yes. They are asking... Uh, that that uh, those BM images that you sh shot, uh, yes. 
so the the uh, jock is asking tyrone uh, why didn't you use a two light setup for the 325 bms um it was a charity run so our time was a bit limited with the amount of time that we had to shoot and my choice of lighting for that uh yeah so we were also limited with space with what we could take with us and that's uh what i chose the 8300 for i'm not sure if that answers your question yeah uh, but i have something planned coming up also where i'll be making full use of all my lighting for a prop shoot looking forward to it yeah i'll show you just one more um so i use the same model for tima edu she has a, a brand called authenticity clothing brand i work a lot with her um, this was one of the shots that I got with her out in Newtown, Johannesburg also. Um, here we did a two-light setup. This was actually my first shoot with my 8300. So I used my V860 to bring a bit of, um, how do I say, angle from the back of her. I'll show you how we used it. Oh, we love uh, behind the scenes. Yeah. I love behind the scenes also. Sometimes I think my behind the scenes shots come out better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the V860 was positioned in the parabolic box, and we had the 8300 in the uh, ADS 85 box. Um, I used my 300 as my main light there, and I just gave a bit of light burst from my V860 on uh, the right. Thanks, man. This was also shot around three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. To show you another image. Stunning yeah. shot. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we just got a question. Moneni asking, is that continuous light? No, Moneni, this is these are all uh, um, flash. Yeah, it was flash high sync. Um, this is another shot where I started making full use of my model lamp on my 8300. This actually wasn't flash. It was just. This was continuous light that I, I did with the shot over here. I used the 8300. That's beautiful, bro. Uh, is that the oh, 8300 nice. modeling light? Yeah, it's the 8300 modeling light at its highest. Is it that? Uh, is oh, that wow, that's, that's cool. Uh, wow. That's stunning. Yeah. So it was actually dark around <laughs> us, so it made the light even look more powerful. Um, the light that came from there was actually quite good. I just thought it was nice. I'll show you another one. Um, am I being informative with this? <laughs> Absolutely. That's another one that I did. Mm. And this was just a one light setup. Eh? So, um, yeah, I also enjoy shooting with one light just because also it's easy to work with, more portable. Um, and you have to have a lighting assistant for both lights, especially when there's a <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, it does make it easier <laughs> to work with a one light setup. Um, I'll show you another setup that we use. Um, for this one, we just use the QR, the quick release with the 8200 in the shot. This is one of my favorite wedding shots. Oh, it's very, yeah. very nice. Wow. Also, beautiful wedding venue, Red Ivory. We love to shoot there. I'm sure Sable and them have shot there also. Yeah, it is a good venue. You can fall in the pool inside the yeah. reception. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for this shot, I um, is of my friend Kurt Beats. He's one of the 94.7 DJs. Um, we just also used the one light setup here, but the, the, the clouds was awesome on this day. The weather was awesome, so it, it caught very nicely. Uh, I just uh, Tyrone, I've just got a question here. Um, Cal uh, Carlista is asking, how do you get your photos so crystal clear? Focus, <laughs> um, focus, and light. <laughs> like lighting makes a big difference, <laughs> believe it or not. Lighting does help with getting crystal clear photos. And Yo, the just to add to that, uh, um, you know, the... wherever, flash, wherever flash hits, it will freeze that subject. That's why flash mm -hmm. images are so crisp and so clean. Um, wherever light touches, it will freeze that subject, and that's why it's so crisp and clear. Yeah. Um, let me just try to one or more. So, I actually... Show us that bride one. Which one? That, that, that sitting bride. Go down. Oh, uh, this one, yeah? 
Yeah, that one there. Okay, so this one I just used very lightly off camera flash on my V860, mm. and um, I used some of the ambient light coming through the window. So on this part, I used more the light to bring out some shadows from behind because I wanted that table, and I so wanted just that. The light. Yeah. So um, yeah, it actually helped out very nice with this. I enjoyed this wedding also. This is also red ivory wedding venue. Yeah. This is some nice bridal shots that we. That's beautiful, bro. Yeah. So I'm just working with the ambient lighting that we had for the day. Okay, guys, so that's most of what I can show you now. Um, but you're more than welcome to check out the rest of my work on my profiles. We're definitely going to share and invite the guys to everyone's profiles afterwards. Uh, let me just get that stream off there. Uh, there we go. Hey, the devil didn't want me to do this stream, eh? <laughs> oh, and Welcome back on board. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Before, we, before I let you go, I just need to see one or two of your outside images before we move on because those are absolutely brilliant as well. Can you just quickly share one or two of your outside images? Thank you, Tyrone. Those were amazing, my man. Well done. Thanks, Trumpy. Mm. Yeah, Anvar, you can just share your screen again. Guys, in the meantime, we just got a question from Yusuf. He's asking, how do you guys set up cart around and generally manage all the light gear on a wedding day? Assistance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's your answer, Yusuf. Assistance. And uh, put a face yeah, in the sock if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> and you should, if I can just add something, you know, um, um, there's a lot of guys looking for experience, looking to get into this game. So you, you'll always mm -hmm. be able to find someone that uh, that's willing to learn from you or that can learn something from you. So, yeah, you've just got to put yourself out there and uh, get your those assistance. All right. Uh, Anwar, just share your uh, pictures. Um, yeah, get, get us one of those uh, outside ones of yours. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Beautiful. Oh my god. Beautiful. Um yes, this one was not shot with high speed sync because I utilized the in defaulter. So mm. my shutter speed was even below 200 on this specific shot, and it was if you can see in the background how fast the sun is. Yeah. So um so this was just a one light setup camera light. Uh, so tell me why why the why uh, why the um why the ND filter if you have uh, high speed sync. Um, I want to utilize full power of my flash at that given stage. Um, that okay. was the eighty four hundred power which I shot at uh, half power, um, which was a very bright day. So I wanted to utilize and to regain as much power in my flash still. Um, for all the for the entire shoot because i don't shoot any i i don't shoot natural light pics outside all of my pictures are artificial light so um i wanted to reserve some power for just in case if i might need it it um i do have the adb2 also as a backup but uh, my preferred light is the 400. okay and then show us one more one more please <laughs> <laughs> so, no pressure this was a shutter speed of 125 also. Oh, wow. What um, lens is this? This was, this was shot with my bread and butter lens, um, which is the Sigma 105. Um, so, and maybe um, this uh, this one also. This one, this one there. Hey. Like in the filter. Mm, beautiful. Um, and we can maybe just explain this light setup for us. One light setup. Is it one light? This is one light. How do you get those shadows so soft on her back? On the on her back, it yeah. Is, so. I'm sorry, I'm shooting wide open 1.4. Ah. What well, lens did you say this was? It's a Sigma 1 105. Oh, yeah. Wow, 105, 1.4, eh? Beautiful, man. That's that, oh, that's a bit of a lens, bro. I'm sure you have to scan quite a bit <laughs> of that, eh? Yeah, so. 
And just tell me what this. Yes, one pick. What light uh, ref, um, uh, um, did you use a softbox here, or what? What did you use there? Yeah, I use a parabolic uh, Godox uh, 90, 90 to 95 centimeter that 90, parabolic. That 90 is a beauty. I've also got the 90. Oh, mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Like the uh, 90 out. Put up these images on this one, yeah. Also the 105, but I just stopped down um, because you can see the difference in the bokeh here uh, because I wanted to show off a bit of the car also, the Range Rover. Yeah, yeah. And you if stop on this shot? Uh, I stopped uh, two stops down, 2.8. Okay. Nice, brother. Andre, thank you so much, my man. Thanks for sharing those. You're welcome. Ooh. Right. Oh. Almost uh, close the stream, yeah. Um, right, let's move on to the silvers. The silver studio. <laughs> Hello. You, you, you guys are in for a treat. You've got to see their presentation. Yeah, luckily, uh, yeah, I feel Andy has yeah, uh, yeah. seen the whole yeah. presentation <laughs> for us. They really yes, went over it. Well done, guys. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys can you even see? Okay. Just take us through it, huh? <laughs> Cool. Can everyone see? Yes. Okay, cool. Sure. Sure. Um, ach, this sure. is the equipment that we use. Um, like we have explained earlier, so it's just the Godox 8200s. We have two of them that we use. Um, Godox 8600. Um, and then for speed lights, for on-camera flash, we usually use the V862. Um, and then soft boxes I use is the Beauty Dish, um, Octobox, and then the 180 centimeter umbrella. So... I'm a big fan. The bigger the the softbox, the bigger, ah, the softer the light. So yeah, yeah. Um, I wow. just quickly before I'm gonna show you these shots. Um, here's a behind the scenes. Um, so actually, I had some a scrim from what's the company? Camelot. Uh, Camelot. Yeah, Camelot. Um, they've got amazing gear there. If you guys ever want to buy gear, because I don't always believe in just buying. Um, Saves a lot of money just to, um, just to, uh, so yeah, that was the soft, uh, basically a big softbox box reason. And I just put a 8,600 behind it. Um, and then we started getting this, this, these kind of lights. So, oh, beautiful. Uh, um, um, and we used a fog machine, um, on the middle shot. Just to create those, uh, those foggy are, glare. yeah, those yeah. hazy mm. kind of shots. So yeah, um, the shot on the right, sorry guys, um, the shot here on the right, um was in the evening we shot we shot the shot it was at night yeah it was so, dark yeah. any questions stunning work it's a uh, lot of work. what lens was that shot with <laughs> Sorry, what, lens? what lens was uh, that shot with guys the 85 yeah so it's the 85 and, and yeah, yeah and then the 2470 <laughs> tamarind <laughs> so guys if i'm right uh just go back one picture yeah so you basically created uh natural looking light coming through there i mean that looks exactly like yeah and you mm. just a lot of it. it yeah the the picture on the right hand side was in the evening so we created the light through the window um the other images were taken during the day so we utilized the natural light with flash yeah okay yeah that's brilliant guys nice one Thanks, that's man. beautiful thank you thank you so much <laughs> oh yeah so that's just the behind the scene um so this shot um we did engagement shoot um for crystal and david so we wanted to go for a more kind of moody look um for these shots um so we said we have put one light on your left you will see it's actually lit up here i don't know if you guys can see my mouse um, yes, yeah you can yeah cool we, we, yeah we put the we put one light in the bathroom to yeah, um, well, you know to light mm. up as left. you can see yeah. on her face just a little bit of light we close the door a little bit just with the light yes. bouncing on her face well, a little bit so oh, there was a light on there. as you guys can see on the floor as well there's the little light coming yeah. through yeah i can see that yeah That's amazing i can see that and then we just opened uh, again we just mix we mixed it with the ambient light um so we open up the the curtains um, just the natural light coming in, filling it up here just a little bit. 
and then um, just some full light because it was still dark here on her face. So just a soft full light just to fill up those shadows. Um, and as you can see with the the um, curtains that is open, the light that's bouncing here looks and um, gave that reflection on the door handle. So yeah, very mm -hmm. nice guys. Cool. But yeah, as you guys can see, with like every photo shoot we do, we go for um, different kind of styles. It's not like we're staying into one kind of style. We usually just see the kind of vibe and the setup, and then we create a whole mood board for um, for the people, and then from there we take it and see what. That's we can quite do. impressive because it's it, it's a lot of versatility. You know, I've got my style, and I stick to that. Uh, and yeah. the fact that you guys can jump, you know, through these styles are really good. Yeah, yeah. So with this, with this as well, this was shot at Smithsfield. I don't know if you guys have been there before. Yes. Um, but originally it was actually very. Oh, sorry. Um, it was actually very, very dark in there, just to shoot all natural light. So, I think if I can remember, remember correctly, why is it doing that? Sorry. <laughs> um, with this shot on the right, with the swinging a dress around. Um, that was about, I think it was the three light setup we did. Yeah, so it was the 180 centimeter softbox umbrella we sit here on the right. Um, and then, like with the middle shot, you're going to see there's a little, the I don't know if you guys can see the, the lights. Friction, reflection in the eyes. Yeah. yeah. So basically, there was then two lights, the uh, a beauty dish, almost like right on the right side of my camera. I'm explaining it okay. And then uh, another light on the left hand side just to like um, fill in with the shadows so that the shadows isn't too dark because at the end of the day, it's like a bridal shoot and we don't want the shadows to be too harsh. Um, Silver, uh, what yes. camera systems do you guys use? Uh, so it's Canon. I shoot the 5D, 5D Mark IV and she uses the 5D Mark III. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful, guys. Um, but this one we shot it early morning. Um, I promise this guy is not is not a sky replacement to use. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but <laughs> we just used a little, um, just some full light just at the back, just to light up a dress just a little bit. Again, mixing the ambient light um, with, with the flash. So, so yeah. it was just it was just the one light. Yeah. Light. So we tried to keep it so it looked like a natural shot and not. That you basically can see it shot with a flash if it makes sense so sure. we try to keep it as natural as possible how did you guys get the mist in on that shot the, the, uh, that, uh, was, that was actual mist so yeah, it was very early in the morning yeah yeah, yeah. Near, nearby river <laughs> and your shutter speed on that my what shutter speed. Your, shutter uh, speed? Sh your my shutter speed you you're asking me um I'm gonna be honest. I can't really remember to be honest with you. It was, yeah, because it's hard, um, eh? It's hard to get like haze in if you want, especially. With, yes, I uh, think my shot speed must have been on 125 or 160. To be honest yeah. with you. The beautiful yeah. guys. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, man. Stunning work. Like I can run away <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, so we this was a client we did a fashion shoot for it was just new dresses that she released so it was basically a fashion shoot we did with Dominique um, as a makeup artist um, basically what we did here this was a two light setup with a scrim so we used a um, I think it was an eight by eight foot scrim um, to cast those soft shadows and then just a, a beauty dish on the right hand side and then a small um I, I think it was a flash that i used also on the right hand side so as you can see with the rim um so i could just show you the rim there yeah cool. that rim. so yeah so i would like to ask how did you get the shadows out from underneath that uh there was actually no shadows to be honest with you there was like completely no shadows at all i don't know I don't, I don't know if it was luck or something, but no, I was I thinking it was going to be a lot of shadows <laughs> coming in and they didn't actually come. I think it's probably because of the scrim. Yeah, the scrim used will make a lot of shadows. Because it's so big, it will just uh, not show any shadows. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, yeah, beautiful. This, this is a shot we did. Uh, same with Zafrika, um, with Ofafa champion. <laughs> also, make a stunning makeup <laughs> artist. Um, also, the dress um again with like with the middle shot and it was just a one light setup 
um, with the sun still coming in there. Um, and then on the left hand side was again the scrim. Um, and then on the right hand side, just a little bit of a full light coming in. As you can see, yeah, I got very nice pictures. Thank you, man. <laughs> Beautiful work. The um, so yeah, with this one we did for Donny, uh, just a commercial shoot. It was it was new bags that he released. Um, this was basically just a one light setup. So with this shot, um, we just there was just a softbox here. Just uh, I think it was yeah, I think it was the P90 that we used here just to cast that little bit off white here. And then the same year, we just put it on the right hand side a little bit behind him to cause that day so, yeah and i think this was the sun. Yeah. yeah that was a sunday yeah i love that shot in the right man thanks right, man thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> always appreciate the comments <laughs> um so yeah this was actually shot with yolandi just uh, we just we were just playing around with the lights everything here at the house um I think how many little was this is a one light two, two light two setup. Light yeah, so this was a two light setup. Um obviously there was I think wasn't this yeah, there was one from the back and then one from the front. So yeah. Um again it was just a beauty dish. Um can you just quickly go back? Sorry. Just a beauty dish on um on the on the front hand side and then just one at the back flash just going off. Um actually the umbrella I was using the 120, 120 centimeter umbrella. I love it when my flashes bounce. I don't know. Like I, I'm in love with the umbrellas. So yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so with your white balance on the previous image, do you just set it with your normal gray card or how do you go about um so with my, I don't shoot auto white balance, I usually um put my settings on Kelvin. Um, okay. the Kel yeah, so then I will actually try to get the color as close as possible on my viewfinder and then from the yeah, because yeah, then... I normally start around five, nine, five, eight around there. Do you guys do the same? Yeah, five, oh, yes. five, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, mm. I, yeah. Again, it depends on the mood what we're going for, yeah. So, yeah, but, but usually it's that, around the, 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 the one that's closest to, to natural sunlight, yes. Yeah. Cool, can we go on? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, this was for NPL. Um, what we did here, this was quite a cool setup for me, the one on the left hand side. Um, so this was a three light setup. Um, so there was one coming from this side, as you can see his face is lit up here. Um, one from the back. Um, as you guys can see with this shot, um, my light is much more harsher than with the previous with the bridal shots. Um, as you can see here, it's much yeah. softer. Um, I usually tend to, when I shoot the guys, I, I go a little bit more with harsher light. I don't know, it just worked for me. That's my own personal opinion. Hmm. I think it brings out the rip in them also. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, just to get that, how can I say that, like you said, the rip. The grungy look. Um, we usually use like a coconut oil. You just smear that on him just to, especially if you'd like take for bodybuilders, take photos and everything, just put in like a kind of oil. So the more shiny his skin is, the, <laughs> the better it looks cool. on photos. <laughs> it's great. So yeah, cool. Um, this is a shot we did for, for a DJ now recently. So usually when we start off with um, studio shoots, um, especially with our models and anyone we work with, we will usually just start off with a one light setup, as you guys can see here. Um, this helps us just to get our models just comfortable. I don't want to start off with a bang and just lights everywhere going off and then just scaring them off. So I'll usually just start off with a one light setup and then I will then start dragging in some extra shots. Um, just ask my assistant to just bring in some extra shots and then eventually we'll get this kind of shots here, like in the middle. That's a great variety again, you know, of, of lighting techniques. I really like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we uh this was a two light setup and we put in a color gel yeah i think it was a, a off, yeah, no. off cto yeah off cto color gel we put in on the right cool any questions so far uh yes can we redo this live so i can do my presentation over please <laughs> 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 Thank you, Landy. <laughs> 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 
Okay, cool. So this was um, shit on set. I don't know if you guys have ever ever worked on set before, but um, it's very stressful um, because my personal opinion, they don't always have like, um, how can I say, you don't always have much time to shoot these shots on set. They they usually just give you like five minutes. This was shot for DSTV ad. Um, and they usually just give you like five, 10, 15 minutes to do quick, quick, all these shots. So um every time the actors came on as soon as they got the shots i had to get my shots and then it's literally like two minutes i had to quickly do a light setup and grab all my shots so um i would use some of their continuous lighting and then just you can see on the right hand side i'll just bring in a flash just yeah. um for editing purposes um yeah just to bring that in if it makes sense The same, yeah. It's just showing you it's all these shots. I feel like I'm watching DSTV. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're feeling like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Special the viewers. <laughs> awesome. Um, so this was our recent build watch um, shoot we did. Um, it's a composite. So this is a composite shot. Um, so what a composite shot is is okay. Let me just first say I shoot. I think I shot around if stop eight if stop nine um, my focus was around here somewhere um, i always try to put it in the middle of the car so that you can get like for instance if i'm going to focus here then the rest of all those are going to be out of focus so i always try to put my focus point somewhere in the middle to get the most to get everything in focus if it makes sense um and then i would then just ask my system to um we put on uh, 80 to 8200 on a light stand and then basically would then just walk around and i'll then just grab shots um as he walks around the car with the flash on the car and then afterwards we would then just do retouching put all those shots together and then you'll get this this shot very nice guys uh same yeah Stunning. this was uh um a five light setup what i actually did here um this is something that i actually learned by and um andre Badenos, um when we did a workshop um with him and dpc um donny bester's um course um so i used trace paper for for the window basically just a light going through the trace paper and it gave me that soft rim and the soft your uh, softness here on the on the yeah. screen yeah. so there's no reflection yeah no yeah. weird reflection of the lights or anything so yeah i use trace paper just a little tip if you guys wanted to hmm. use and again as you guys can see there was a light coming from that side and from this side and it was again a composite shot we just had to walk around beautiful Cool. Um, basically, this is a composite shot. I um, actually did this shot during lockdown. <laughs> um, again, just a few different light setups we did, and then me just throwing in the milk and all that stuff, and eventually getting the shot here on the left. So, yeah. Great. Um, so, this was a shot for Eat Naked. Um, it's a honey product. Um, the stuff we used in the background was the actually it was actually the liquid we used was not honey but it was motor oil. motor oil we used uh we do a lot of food photography as well and i think you guys know if you do food, food photography it's not usually food that's in the photo yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah this shot as well just a couple walking on the beach um, and my assistant was literally just standing here on the right hand side, just filling in those shadows, um, just to get the shot as well. So yeah, because it was a very harsh, sunny day, but yeah, I must say I'm very happy with that shot. One of my favorites. So yeah. Amazing thanks. guys. Amazing um, work. <laughs> thanks guys. Uh, if I may, can I ask a question? Um, it's a little bit off topic from the lighting, uh, subject, but do you guys maybe have some tips to get? uh agency work uh or ad agency work that kind of thing like what what can we do or what do they look for i must say i think for, for me it was just word of mouth um one photographer wasn't available um and he recommended me and then since they we help each other so yeah i'm not taking away his work or anything like that but yeah okay. i basically would just say it's word of mouth yeah um thanks yeah. guys love your work thanks. man 
Thank you so um, much. Andy, when uh, you done, you, you can come start with my portfolio and my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Your presentation Thanks, guys. Your amazing. Thanks, Your presentation beats uh, Dion and Trompi's lighting behind them. <laughs> Look, I'm just glad. I, I I'm just, I'm just glad I don't have to show any images tonight because you guys will just uh, outshine <laughs> me. I don't like that. <laughs> John, guys, thank you so much for the compliments. Appreciate it. <laughs> John, you are up, my man. Let's get to the master. John Pierre. Oh. Well, uh, after after this uh, Solberg Studios work, uh, let's see what we can do. <laughs> um, can everybody see? Wow. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Um, I've had this shot in mind for many years, and recently I had the opportunity to, to do this, um, where the groom walks in front, the bride, and then the elephant. She actually had a, an apple in her hand, and this elephant was fighting her for this apple. And, <laughs> and it, it was quite it's a battle. Lovely, but what I've done. Sorry? You can see a little bit of shock on her face. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can see the stress. Um, I, I've lit this from the front with an AD360 and a standard reflector. Now, um, what I did here is to balance the ambient light with a flashlight. So what I, I've basically used the flash just to lift the exposure a little bit in front. Nothing serious, just to, to, to lift it a bit. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy I got the shot. Let me go to the next, oh, sorry, next one. Uh, this is uh, uh, Temba Madima. He's uh, uh, an athlete, a very well-known South African athlete. And uh, he came to a stadium in Boxburg and we did this shot. It was lit with a single flash, uh, AD360, uh, from the front, from the camera right. And uh, if if you if he had to face the flash, face the flash, it was a little bit to his right as well. So uh, no soft boxes or nothing, just the bare uh, standard reflector to try and push the uh, to push the contrast a bit on this shot and yeah we had to do a lot of shots to actually get this one uh and uh, i'm quite happy with it very nice yeah. sorry the, the lens um i can uh, the one before can actually not remember i think it was uh, uh, it was my 7200 i almost always shoot with a 7200 okay. i just love okay. it um so it was probably no 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 uh, I remember now it was a uh, 16 to 35 cannon, 2.8, but I've shot this at a bit of a higher f stop. And the one um, the, the, oh, sorry, I'm trying to go back to where I was. My Lightroom now went AY. Okay. Guys, sorry about this. Let me just get back to where I was. Dion, while you're doing that, we've just got a few questions. Uh, Pro is just asking. Uh, Dion, what do you use for wedding photography lighting? Just just give us your your, your lighting again. Uh, for lighting, I I've got uh, AD three sixty. I use uh, an AD two hundred. I've got two of them, and then I've got a, a Godox. I think it's the T six eighty five, which is just an on camera flash, but also uh, uh, fully you know high high speed sync and TTL. So that's that's the lighting that I use on on a, a wedding, and uh, I'll shoot a lot just with the standard reflector. But I sometimes uh, for speed I just use a shoot through brolly, and when there's time I use the P ninety H parabolic ref, uh, uh, softbox. Okay. Dion, just one more question. Um, Jackin is asking. Dion, when using flash of animals, does the flash not scare the animal in any way? You'll have to repeat that. I can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, so the question is, if you use flash with animals, does it not scare the animal? Uh, the, these, the, uh, this elephant was is, its actually a trained elephant, and I had a chat with the handlers before. And so they said, no, the, they've trained these elephants to not uh, worry about flash. So... 
Yeah, uh, I'm scared of these elephants. They're massive. These are the Naisna uh, <laughs> elephants. They're huge. They're not not smaller like the Bushveld elephants, and uh, and so they were actually trained to be used to uh, used to flash. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's okay. move. Okay. Let's move okay. on. Sorry. Say okay. again. No, it's fine, it's fine, you can carry on, so sorry. I've got a problem with my sound, so I'm, I battle to hear what everybody is saying. Sorry about that. Um, this is a studio shot that I've done. I just love my love to do studio work. Um, and this is just a two-light setup. So it's a, a one a softbox from the front, a square softbox, camera left, and uh, a strip light from the back and trying not to overexpose the backlight too much and uh, trying to get a very good balance between the front and back. The back, the strip light at the back, the only job that they had to do was to give me separation between the subject and the, the dark background. So yeah. this is... Beautiful. Right, let's move on. Uh, this, I love this shot. Not everybody loves this shot. Um, this guy, it was a matric farewell shoot, and this guy just had this look like I don't care look, and he had the most beautiful girl on his side, and this was shot with flash right through the front window of a car, just to, to show if, the, if you can shoot through glass if the glass is at an angle. But you see, Dion, this this shot, uh, it looks like it looks like they're actually dr uh, uh, driving, and it's it's headlights from the car coming yeah. from the opposite side. It's amazing. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's pure luck. The the light was just a little bit brighter at the back. That was pure luck. And I, I virtually just had an on-camera flash, the the six eighty, the uh, Godox six eighty five, and just shot through the front window, and that's it. Sometimes we get lucky. Yeah. No. Do. This, Ooh, wow. this is a shot, a studio shot of Enrico Brankis. He's a South African 100 meter, a very well known uh, South African 100 meter uh, uh, athlete. And this was done with two strip lights. And uh, one was on the left, the other one on the right. I love to shoot like that. Uh, the two strip lights face each other. And then when you turn the angle of your subject between these two two lights, you get uh, all these interesting looks. Um, obviously, the strip lights enhances uh, the way this guy's been built. I mean, uh, this guy, if you look at, at the way he's built, he exercises hours and hours every day. Now, this specific image was published in, one, in the Men's Health magazine a while ago, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, there was a couple of images in the series, but I've, you know, I've just uploaded this one for you guys to look at. And he's a fantastic model as well. If, if you want aggressive, you, he gives you that look. If you want a, a loving look, he'll give it to you. He was a very impressive model. Dion, just a question. Just tell us, uh, just go back to that image. Just tell us yes. um, uh, 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 what part shadows play in, in, in shaping the body like that. You know what? Many, many years ago, I had a mentor, uh, Jan Aman. He was the chief photographer at the Build newspaper. And, and I was still a young photographer. And he told me one day, he says, Dion, shadows must be your friend. And since then, I had a, I had a different lookout on shadows because people are usually scared of shadows. And he says, shadows are your friend. So um, I use shadows. You know, the, the darker the shadows uh the more contrast you get and the lighter the shadows the less contrast you get so you you play with that that's the whole idea of a full light you know for light you darken or or lighten the shadow areas in a picture and so yeah shadows are there to bring out shape and form and show contrast and uh, uh, you have to you have to think about your highlights and you have to think about your shadows at the same time because they work together Brilliantly put. It's the same as drawing. When you draw something without the shadows, it's just flat. flat. Oh yeah, you're right. Yo, I that was good. I uh, wish I could draw. I would. 
I, I always say artists, you know, sometimes I see people that's been artists, uh, painters, and even makeup artists, when they pick up a camera and, start and become photographers, it's a killer combination. They do so well. This uh, is one of my favorite models uh, that I use. And this is a one light setup. And again, a fairly harsh light. It's not a big box on it. It's just a bare light, just a standard reflector um, on camera right and from fairly high so that you, you I have the light on her face and the shadows underneath her, her, her chin. And that's it. And the, sorry, the light was set up in such a way that I light up her face and, and I have a, li a little bit of light on the background as well. And this is virtually just a, a building, an old uh, 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 old storeroom or something with the old table and this is what we managed to get. It's amazing. How about you the detail of the walls in the old shop? Beautiful, man. Yeah, I, I used to, uh, I love to, well, in a studio situation, I shoot, uh, I try to shoot F11 or F16, nothing lower than that. Um, and, and that sort of, and although this was on location, it's still a, a studio setup, you know, I think about it as a studio setup with a one light. Yeah. Um, this was also just a one light setup, also just a standard reflector and balancing ambient light with with uh, uh, the flashlight. Um, like Trumpy said, you know, if you if you use flash, it pops the colors, it just pops the picture and brings it all out. Mm. The next one, I've used flash here, yeah, but very soft flash. The uh, this is a um, 70 to 200 lens at f 2.8, blurring the background, uh, you know, in a big way. And there's some editing added to the blur as well afterwards, and just a single flash from the front. And if you look at the shadow underneath her chin, the, the transition between the highlight and the is fairly fairly harsh, so it's not a, a very soft light. Uh, so, uh, 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 it's not a soft light that I used. It was quite a harsh light, but you know, this is what we got from this. Um, the light that you see in her hair was virtually just a highlight that the sun left there. So, so you, you know, when you get on location, you think of the sun as one of your lights that you use in your setup. So you just have to place your model correctly to pick up some of the sunlight wherever you want to place it. And then you add in the front and you've got a two light setup. One is the flash, the other one is the sun. Beautiful. Let's get to the next one. This is Temba again, Temba Madima, studio shot. Um, I actually used six lights here. Two lights on the background to make it pure white two strip boxes from the back facing about 45 degrees forward and inwards, and then two soft boxes from the front. So the background was overexposed with about one stop, and then the strip boxes was the main light bringing out the detail in the shots, bringing out the contrast, and the front boxes was exposed a little bit lower uh, in order to get this. So it's three different pictures uh, and combined in a triptych now, this was the first time I shot this athlete and he was in the studio and I told him, okay, let's do this. We do ready, steady, go. And he said, like, for real, I said, for real, let's do it. Uh, and he pulled off and the power he pulled off with, he just wound up the whole, the whole background that he was on. I said, okay, let's just slow this down about 100%. So now you're an actor and we slow this down 100% and let's do the ready, steady, go again. And this is what we got. The reflection in the floor is edited. That's not a real reflection. You'll have to put on a plexiglass or something to get that. Uh, and uh, uh, but yeah, I just edited it in. Beautiful. Nice. Jen, Jen, I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'm listening. Hey Jen, where do you get that glass? I'm 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 looking for this glass. I can't get it anywhere. The oh, the plexiglass. I, I, I yeah. haven't even owned a piece in my life. Uh, apparently, it is difficult to get hold of it. Um, so maybe, uh, have you tried a place called Maisie's Plastics? They've got branches all over, all over Gauteng. 
uh, maybe try Maisie's plastics. If you won't, if you don't get it there, you won't get it anywhere. But yeah, because I able to get all the plexiglass, I just edit it in its quicker. Okay, Maisie's plastics. Thank you so much. All right. Let's see. Is this the last picture? But I go, I missed out on some pictures. I'm going to just open up some shots. Here is Temba Madima again. Um, and it's uh, a sandwich. So it's again the two strip boxes facing each other. And you place him and change your exposure. And, and this is how we got, got this picture. Sure. I'm going to go through this. This is where my... This is where my flash tube broke. So I had two strip boxes facing each other again, but on stands very, very high. And these gymnasts was on top of a, a, a boxes that packed. It was fairly high and they jumped onto a trampoline. So we had powder on the trampoline and they had powder in their hands and they would jump and bounce up. And that's when we take the picture. Now, this is where the Godox, came, uh, Godox quality comes in. Uh, in order to freeze movement this fast, you can't just rely on your shutter speed. You're in a studio setup. So you need, on the, you need to rely on the flash duration to freeze the movement. And so if you put your, 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 your studio lights, let's say, on full power, you actually lengthen the flash duration. So what you do... You do the opposite. You bring the power down to quarter, sixteenth, whatever. You bring the power down, and the less power you use on the flashes, the shorter the flash duration, the more visual freezing power your flash will have. So sure. it, it will help if you've got a camera that can go a little bit higher on ISO uh, because that will enable you to use your flashes on lower settings in order to freeze movement. I didn't even know that, Dion. Thanks for sharing that. That's good information. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, this shot was done um, with just one light, 8360, through a shoot through umbrella, and that's it. And we had a funny incident at this shoot. The wind came up, the wind took my shoot through brolly out of the setup. And it ended up on the water. We had to get a guy on the motorboat to go and fetch the brolly for me. So that was a bit of fun we had during this shoot. Um, this is another one light setup. This was a, a small flash, actually, a, a 685. And it was raining big time at this stage. And uh, we just told the couple, you know, do you want pictures or do you want to be dry? So they said they wanted pictures. And uh, uh, Rina, my wife, was holding the flash <laughs> That's pointing a good one. <laughs> towards him. We That's a good took one. the picture. Now, my wife is a very good, uh, 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 what do they call it, automatic uh, light stand, uh, or voice-operated light stand. And I just then had to edit her out afterwards. Um, let me show you this one. This is a two light setup, so it's a small flash at the back just to give a little bit of uh, edging, it has, uh, highlights around the edges. And then the light on the front was uh, shot through a very big uh, shoot through umbrella just to soften the light up. Beautiful, yeah. This is one of my favorite shots. Um, and uh, I, I just used a flash from the left just to put some highlights in it but in terms of what i wanted to do it wasn't all that successful but it, I, I picked up a bit of highlights on the left hand side in the hair but thinking back i could have done it much better but at the end of the day uh, i think i still end, ended up with a good picture so that's also mixing ambient with uh, flash this was a wedding um if you look at that's the bridal party and uh, it wasn't organizing, it was crowd control. It was <laughs> to get everybody lined up and to get everybody into the, you know, I mean, you, 
everybody that's doing weddings knows how difficult it is just to work with five on each side. This is why I, what I work with. Um, and again, it's balancing flash with with uh, with daylight. So I expose for ambient first, and then I just add flash from the front. And you won't believe it. This is just an on-camera flash. That's it. And it, it highlighted uh, the front, and it, it highlighted the flow. The bouquet is being thrown as well. Well done. Let's That's see what I haven't shown yet. Um, Wow. Really That's cool. just one flash at the back. I, I used the AD360 there again, and uh, I just put it on the main table, and and uh, that's it. And quite a bright flash from the back, and it's, it's almost you don't know what you're going to get. You just take pictures, change your angle a bit, change your settings, and you end up and you get a beautiful surprise. Beautiful. That was bare bulb, eh? Sorry? Was that bare bulb? Uh, no, no, it's a standard reflector. Oh. Standard reflector. This is one of my favorite dance shots. It was done at Memoir. They've got, a, you know, everything is white, the roof and the walls and everything is white. So I just had the one flash at the back and you highlight it and the walls and the ceiling picks up all that light and uh, expose the front for you as well. Beautiful. Let's go. Also, yeah, just on camera flash, but be ready. The flash is on, the settings are done. You never know when a moment is going to happen. And yeah, this dog provided the beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this type of shot I love to do. This was the morning after the wedding. They got married fairly late, and we've arranged for the main photo shoot to be the next morning. It was on the north coast. Um, and I've had one uh, a flash on a stand, but I've, I've got a fairly heavy-duty stand, so, so I can push the light very high. Um, and it's the 8360. It's small, it's lightweight, and it's got quite a punch. But I couldn't put a brolly or anything on it because there was strong winds. So, you know, you just make your choices. So you can see the light is fairly harsh, but uh, we still manage to get beautiful light. Uh, this is high speed sync as well. So you, we could freeze movement and uh, obviously we could fight the sun at the back as well with uh, the high speed sync technique. Beautiful, Dion. Beautiful, Dion. Mm. I think I'm almost through. Let's see. I think I've shown it all. That's it. Yeah, I've shown it all. Dion, that was amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. So yes, we are we are at the end of the evening. Is there anything else you guys, uh, Anwar, Livingston, Tyrone, any of you guys, anything else you want to share with the guys before we close out? No. No, I'm good for that. We could always do another one another day. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm 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 good, guys. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Trumpy. I'm really honored. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so basically, everyone that's on here, go buy Godox. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> yeah, guys, so, uh, for the guys joining in on the on the chats and, and the viewers, thank you so much for your time. Uh, please go and follow uh, the photographers that took out the time of the day to, to be here tonight and to share their, their, their photography with us. Um, there will be links up on the um, on the Godox page, so please go and follow the guys. And I'm sure you guys are. If if they've got any personal questions for you guys, they can just contact you. All good for yeah. you. Good. No problem. Yeah, all good. All good. All good. Well good. All good. All then, good. Uh, yeah, thank you, just guys. Thank you for Godox for providing this amazing platform uh, free of charge for everyone. Um, and then, you. guys, just a thank you from me for uh, for your time and. Uh, uh, I chose you guys because I love your work. I've, I've, I've been following you a while you. in the background. Thanks, and, uh, and, and love your work, all of you. Thank you so Same much. Here. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Thank you guys. Enjoy. Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good, night. Good night, guys. Good night. Bye. Yes. Yeah.